it used to be that you could find a buffet at just about every hotel in Las Vegas. And while that has changed and many hotels have taken out their buffets, there are still many of them for you to try. And in today's video, we are going to take you through all of the buffets on the Las Vegas Strip. Now we have full reviews on each one of these buffets and I will link that in the description. But for today, we are going to rank all of the buffets on the Las Vegas Strip only. So if it's not on the Strip, it's not in this video. Also, if it is not a true full-time buffet, it is not in this video either. So let's get right to it. In last place, we have the Circus Circus Buffet. This is a pretty distant last place. We came here for breakfast one morning and it was empty in here, which is fine. But the reason it was empty is because, well, for $24.95, you're not getting much food and much selection at all. That was it for the buffet. And aside from the selection, just the presentation alone left a lot to be desired with the bread still in the bag. There were homemade signs for the different food items and even the labels on the ladles were incorrect. They had salad dressings on there. Although it was a pretty cheap price, I have to say that it was extremely disappointing. Next on the list is the buffet at Luxor. Now this place has a pretty terrible reputation and I really had high hopes that they would be wrong. Unfortunately, they weren't wrong. Now coming inside here, you really feel like you are in this themed place. It looks absolutely adorable in there. And the food selection is pretty decent for the pricing. You have a carving station, you have an omelet station, there are all the breakfast items, and it is brunch, they're open till three, so you do have other areas like Asian food, some Mexican food, a little bit of everything. However, the food quality was poor. I wanted to spit out half of my food and I'm not a picky person. So I would say that if you are going to come to the Luxor to try the buffet, uh, do it at your own risk and maybe stick with some of the fresh stuff like the omelets or the carving station. Stay away from some of the pre-cooked food. Next up on the list is the buffet at MGM Grand. Now this is definitely a step up from the Luxor, but I would consider this sort of your average buffet. There's nothing really special about it. The food is good, it's all edible, they have a good selection, they have your carving station, an omelet station. They also have sushi, which I would recommend you just stay away from. It is not really good. And they have all of your breakfast items. This is another brunch buffet and the price will vary between the weekdays and the weekends. Aside from the food and the quality of the food, the ambiance here is just fine. It's a very big buffet. There's a lot of seating here, but there's really nothing special going on. It hasn't been remodeled lately. It just feels very average. And I think that is sort of what I took away from the MGM buffet is that it's an average buffet. Now this may surprise some people just thinking of where it is at, but the buffet at Excalibur beats MGM Grand's buffet. Now you might think, well, wow, it's at Excalibur. Is it any good, really? Well, first of all, they did remodel this place not too long ago, so it has a more fresh and modern feeling. So the atmosphere itself just feels a little fresher and newer. The food choices are very similar to MGM Grand. Just like there, you have a carving station, you have the omelet station. They also have fresh crepes and a really great dessert section here. The Latin section here I think is what made this place stand out a little bit more over MGM Grand. They had pozole that tasted very authentic, they had some birria tacos. It just tasted like good authentic Mexican food which I didn't see at the previous buffets at all. So overall I think this just provided a little bit more quality and better food selection over MGM Grand. We are now halfway through our list of buffets on the Las Vegas Strip. Be sure to hit that like button and let's continue. Next up, we have a buffet at Bellagio. Now we're starting to get into the higher end buffets with a higher price point. But with that, you're going to get a better selection of food and better quality food. They had different things here that we hadn't seen at the previous buffets. So in addition to the carving stations and omelet stations, Bellagio has a taco bar. If somebody's making fresh tacos for you, they also had a juice bar with different fresh squeezed juices, a wood fire oven for pizzas. They had gelato. They had 
other selections that you wouldn't find at the previous buffets that we covered. They also have a great selection of seafood here. The one thing that Bellagio needs to do with their buffet is figure out their identity. And what I mean by that is that they used to be open for dinner. Then they stopped being open for dinner and only had brunch up until three o'clock. But then they added dinner back once in a while, like Thursday and Friday for March Madness. So I don't know if it's just temporary. Another thing is that they took the pricing off of their website. So I think they just need to figure it out and it can be a wonderful buffet. Now the Wicked Spoon at Cosmopolitan was a surprise for me. I really didn't expect to like it as much as I did. Now, this is only open for brunch, just as many of the other ones are, but this is a little bit different. They have some unique dishes at Wicked Spoon, and one of the things that they offer, which was different from many of the other buffets that we visited, is they have a lot of dishes that are served in sort of single serve platters. So rather than you having to take a spoon and serve yourself a certain quantity, they've placed a single serving into a smaller dish for you so that you can take back to your table. I just feel like this is a little bit more sanitary and also you're not overeating and serving yourself a huge portion. But if you really love the dish, you can go back and get more. Now the Wicked Spoon has all of the regular stuff like the carving station and they have the omelet station as well. I really enjoyed some of the unique flavors in the dishes. One of the favorites here is the mac and cheese. It had this kick to it. It was really unique. I have heard, however, that the Wicked Spoon has gone downhill recently. Now we haven't been here in over a year, so I'm not sure if that's the case. If you have been to Wicked Spoon and you feel it has gone downhill, let us know in the comments. We made it to the top two and let me just say that both number two and number one you could swap them and that would be completely fair because they are both excellent and have great offerings now starting with the bacchanal buffet this is at caesar's palace and even though it is extremely expensive you are going to have an exquisite meal here there are a lot of different seafood types. The carving station options are vast. You have everything you can imagine. They have birria tacos that they're making right in front of you. The Asian station is also just excellent. The food here is phenomenal. And in the setting that you're in with the remodeled happening over the pandemic, you feel like you are in just a brand new place. It feels very welcoming and very, very clean as well. Now this place can get really busy. I would highly recommend you make a reservation. You can make reservations here. There's also an option to go on the wait list or if you are Caesars Diamond or above, you can go and skip the line and go right to the Caesars Diamond line to get in quicker. Bacchanal Buffet is open from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. so you can come for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I love the presentation of the food items at Bacchanal. Everything just looks very appetizing when you're trying to select your food choices. And the food here was excellent. Now, of course, you're not gonna like everything. I didn't really enjoy the pizza here, but I can't really complain. Do I really wanna get pizza at a buffet? Probably not. I would say try all of these different and unique dishes and See what you like, try things out. That's the cool thing about coming to a buffet like this. You're going to have a lot of different options and try something that you've never tried before. And if you haven't already guessed it, our number one buffet is Wynn Las Vegas. Wynn itself is just a beautiful property and that whole theme carries through into the buffet. It is absolutely gorgeous. You're in a beautiful setting and the food presentation is gorgeous. They have a lot of different options here that are not included at any of the other buffets that we saw, including caviar. If you are a seafood lover, I recommend you come to Win Las Vegas. They have two different types of crab. They actually had sushi that I liked. I cannot find sushi at a buffet that I like, but of course that's to be expected. The Win sushi is good. I loved that ramen station. It had a variety of toppings that you could put into your soup and we just really enjoyed ourselves here. Lines here can get very long, so I do recommend that you make a reservation if you want to eat here. Oh, you're hungry now? You want a little more? I got you. Check out this playlist here and you can check out all of the buffets that we have reviewed in Las Vegas. 
Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.